नमस्कार डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम यू टू अवर चैनल बायो बाय गुलाब सर एज ए पार्ट ऑफ सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट न्यू चैप्टर फोटोसिंथेसिस एज यू आर अवेयर अबाउट डेफिनेशन ऑफ फोटोसिंथेसिस दैट यू लर्न इन सेवेंथ एज वेल एज टेंथ क्लास एंड इवन इन एट्थ क्लास ऑल्सो यू हैव रेफर्ड एज इट सिंपल दैट प्रोसेस ऑफ प्रोडक्शन ऑफ फूड बट वेन वी लर्न For 11th class, it is not so. We have to have elaborated definition. That is, it is an anaerobic process of living green plant in which complex organic substances are produced from simple inorganic substances in presence of sunlight inside the chloroplast. This is the definition for 11th class. And photosynthesis is so called because synthesis is a production. Photo means light. production with the help of light and that is what photosynthesis which occur in two phases light phase and dark phase light phase is also known as photophosphorylation and dark phase is known as biosynthesis and there are many name for dark phase kelvin cycle assimilation reaction reduction reactions c3 cycle and so on it is very interesting to know what we get food from that process it is the only machinery and it is the only process can be said as it is a celestial process can be said as it is a godly process it is the only process that can convert light energy into chemical energy that means it is the only process that can feed whole living being wow i think it is something very close to the god when we say that pranadata annadata this process can be said as a annadata process there is no any machinery in the world to convert light energy into chemical energy as a food if this process would have not there chloroplast would have not there we would have not surviving on the earth and therefore it become a very graceful to learn about it become very interesting and enjoy to learn about and you are lucky taking biology and learning about photosynthesis that which fed whole human kind whole living being such a celestial process do this process is known to the other student one who is taking education in other field in detail no do other people know about this this celestial process no it is your duty and my duty to make it preach that the importance of this process in the society so as to have more plantation to convert more light energy into more chemical energy to feed everyone and therefore it become very very interesting to know now let's see i have drawn that first steps of photosynthesis light phase having photophosphorylation there are two photophosphorylation cyclic and non cyclic photophosphorylation as a light phase light phase is called so or light phase because here we use the light and therefore we have to begin with that what exactly that photosynthesis begin with that definition and here this is a process <coughs> six molecule of carbon dioxide six molecule of carbon dioxide combined with 12 molecule of water in presence of sunlight and chloroplast to produce glucose carbohydrate and that is what the food which fed to every living being also produce water and release oxygen not only fed living being but also give oxygen as a pranoid see here this annadata as a food and oxygen as a pranoid so can we say that this process is very close to the god it is the gift of god that as we say that god is pranadata and annadata pranadata oxygen hai annadata glucose hai that's what yes so this is photosynthesis now let us learn how this carbohydrate is being produced and oxygen is being reduced and released through this process with the steps the first step is to know about light phase and then dark phase but see i have written here both light phase and dark phase together to understand what is light phase is a photophosphorylation what is dark phase is a biosynthesis what does that photophosphorylation means photophosphorylation that is what addition of phosphate with adp in presence of light energy is called photophosphorylation that means production of atp from adp and non phosphate with the help of light is known as photophosphorylation so i have mentioned here definition this is the process of production of atp with the help of light from adp and inorganic phosphate therefore 
photophosphorylation. This occur in grana lumen, lumen of the thalaquoid. Dark reaction is biosynthesis. Whatever produced during light phase, ATP and NADPS2, that used in dark phase to assimilate carbon dioxide to carbohydrate, and therefore it is written. This is the process of assimilation of carbon dioxide into carbohydrate. Where it occur, it occur in stoma. So light phase occur in grana, dark phase occur in stoma. Let us learn about light phase photophosphorylation. How ATP are produced and NADPS2 produced. Which used in direct, direct reaction. So let us learn about photophosphorylation. So here I have second slide. With this cyclic photophosphorylation and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Why that this process is known as cyclic? This process is known as non-cyclic. Cyclic as usual that anything which re, which release come back to the original position that is cyclic. Anything that is released do not come back to the original position non-cyclic. Here, so as that when light energy is absorbed by pigment system 1, PS1, P700, what does it mean? It means that light energy is absorbed from sunlight with the wavelength of 700 nanometer and therefore so called P700. Why it is called PS1? Because it was discovered first, PS2 that is 600 it is discovered first, discovered later and therefore although 700 is more than 600 T, but still it is called as PS1. I hope you got it. So pigment system 1 absorbs light energy in the form of photon. As soon as it absorbs the light energy, chlorophyll molecule has magnesium in its core, that is in pore pyrene ring. That magnesium gets oxidized and releases the electron. You know what is oxidation. It is either addition of oxygen, release of hydrogen, or donation of electron. Here, electrons are donated. That means, as soon as light energy is absorbed, magnesium gets oxidized and release the electron. That electron which released, reached to the high energy level. And that when it reached to the high energy level, it is first accepted by, first electron acceptor in cyclic photophosphorylation is ferrodoxin. What is ferrodoxin? You remember please, because in non-cyclic, first electron acceptor is pheophytin and that is as a differentiating point. So, first electron acceptor is ferredoxine. Now, from ferredoxine, it is transferred to the plastophenone. From plastophenone to plastocyanin between in between, cytochrome complex that is B6F, it is written in your book. I have not written here B6F, but you just consider it please. So, B6F cytochrome complex, where that energy is utilized, that high energy level electron. Now, energy from electron is used to produce the ATP that is from ADP and inorganic phosphate to produce ATP. In your book, they have mentioned only one place as production of ATP but actually there are two places where ATP are producing cyclic photophosphorylation. You please refer on net. But as a part of syllabus, what you have given in your book, I have to explain. So here the ATP are produced while transferring electron from cytochrome complex to plastocyanin. Here you got it. Now electron from plus to sign in reached back to the original position from it was released and therefore this process is known as cyclic photophosphorylation. I hope you got it that why it is called cyclic photophosphorylation and how to explain it. The way the electron are flow and events are happening that is only we have to mention. Once you know the diagram you can explain. Now here only pigment system what is it involved? Involved not PS2. Let us learn about non-cyclic photophosphorylation. What is the difference? It's very interesting when we go together while learning these two together, it will make very correct understanding. Now, inside non cyclic photophosphorylation, pigment system PS, PS1 and PS2 both are involved. But which is the first step in non cyclic photophosphorylation? Is that light energy absorbed in the form of photon? Light energy absorbed in the form of photon. By non cyclic, this PS2, P680, that is light energy absorbed in the form in the wavelength of 680 nanometer. That is therefore it is called P680. Now, when it absorbs, it also having that chlorophyll with pore pyrene ring having magnesium get oxidized and released to electron. But how? Before that, light energy is used to photolyze the water. This water molecule get photolyzed into Two molecules of hydrogen and two molecules of oil. Each 
2 molecule of S2. Therefore, 12 molecule of S2 will get break into 12 molecule of hydrogen and 12 molecule of OH. Producing 6 molecule of H2O and 6 molecule of O2 with the release of 12 molecule of electron. But every 2 molecule of hydrogen release 2 molecule of electron. And therefore, it is shown with this process that 2 molecule of H2O photolyze into 2 molecule of proton and 2 molecule of hydroxyl ion. Further, this hydroxyl get break into H2O with 1 molecule of O2 and 2 electron. Now, these 2 electron after photolysis are transferred or reach to the higher energy level where first electron acceptor in non-cyclic photophosphorylation is PO5 team. From there it transferred to plastophenone and plastophenone to plastocyanin through cytochrome coverage B6 F B F6. So here this electron energy from electron is used to produce ATP molecule. In organic phosphate combined with ADP to form ATP and finally that electron go to PS1. But do not come back to the PS2. Now, why this P1, PS1 can receive this electron? Because already PS1 also got excited and release that electron, which are transferred first to the ferrodoxin and from here they are used for ionization of NADP into ionized NADP. Because that ionized NADP to combine with this proton to form, to form the NADP H2 to form the NADP H2. So what is NADP H2? It is a reducing agent which is supposed to donate the hydrogen to the carbon dioxide to produce, it, produce the carbohydrate and therefore equally NADP is are important with ATP produced during cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. I hope you got it. Electron released from PS1 is used for ionization of NADP into ionized NADP and not reach back to the PS1. But the electron released from PS2 come to the PS1. That means cycle is not completed. In either of case, electron released from PS1 is used for ionization, not come back. The electron released from PS2 is received by PS1, but not come back to the PS2, PS1. And therefore, this process is known as non-cyclic photophosphorylation. I hope you got it. What is cyclic and what is non-cyclic photophosphorylation? As both the diagrams are with us, let us learn differentiating point question can be asked. Distinguish between cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation for three mark in board exam. Or these, these differences will help you to understand the question in need and application of knowledge will help to solve the question and therefore let us learn. As you have to give first definition, cyclic and non-cyclic. Here the electron released from PS1 reach back to the PS1, it is known as cyclic. Here electron released from PS1 used for ionization but do not reach back to the PS1, hence it is called as non-cyclic. Here PS1 that is P700 only used here. Two pigment system PS2 and PS1 both are used and therefore this is the major difference. Second, here no release of oxygen, here there is a release of oxygen in the atmosphere, here there is only production of ATP, here there is a production of ATP as well as NADPS2. Also very important this process occur in both grana as well as grana lamellae. this process occur only in grana women or thalabad women. These are the major differences. What we can write in examination as well as you can explain it and I have prepared another slide that is what showing this distinguishing point. So as the ready-made notes for you, you can pause it and note down as a note distinguish between photophosphorylation that is cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. As well as same is the explanation for non-cyclic photophosphorylation question can be asked for Fahima. What is non-cyclic photophosphorylation? Explain it with the help of schematic flowchart. So that you have to explain this one with this schematic flowchart. You will get 5 mark. As well, diagrams are available on net. You can refer it and go for having whatever I explained and given in net. I hope you got it very clearly. What are light phase and dark phase as well as what is cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Even though if you are having any doubt, you can ask in comment section. I am happy you are always with us, but at the same time, I request you to share and subscribe the channel. Thank you. Happy learning.